Hey, today we're doing a TES tutoring session with Ben Reed. Uh, ben, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I started playing TES uh, late 2015, cool. and I've just been playing it since. Love the deck. Nice. So, uh, how much experience would you say that you have? Um, I don't have any major tournaments that I've played in. I haven't gotten out to any GPs, but I play a lot locally. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, what do you think your weaknesses are with the deck? Um, I'd probably say take, like, uh, complicated uh, discard. So, like, trying to assess the threats that they have and taking th the correct one from their hand with our discard spells. Okay. And uh, the last question, I prefer that we do know, or that you do know, but would you like me to tell you what your opponents are playing? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, uh, let's Got get it. started. Cool. Man, Landon's crazy. Yeah. He he's got so many trophies. Uh, I heard somewhere that he averages uh, a league every like 50 minutes to an hour, which is very, very quick. Yeah, I'd believe that. You also see Ethan, Monkeys Can't Cry. Oh, that's him? Yeah. All right. And then uh, Control for Days is Brandon Osborne. Okay, I play against him every once in a while. Yeah, both very powerful Storm Wizards. Mm-hmm. Then of course Cyrus. Yeah. Oh Theo, he uh, lives like an hour south of me. Oh really? He plays Death and Taxes. All right, this hand seems pretty decent against Death and Taxes. I'd agree. So we'll keep this one. All right. Um, <laughs> Actual best draw. Yeah. So we're going to get a black source with the Delta. Chrome Mox on the right of flame. No, 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 because then we can't cast the Burning Wish. Um, I'm going to let you think this one out. Yeah. So, how do we play this Dark Ritual? Would you like me to tell you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm missing something here. Your initial gut reaction was correct. Basic Swamp, Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox, Rite of Flame, Lion's Eye Diamond, Burning Rush. That gives us enough? Yeah, I guess it does. Okay. Just curious, uh, it just started downpouring here. Are you picking up the audio on that? Uh, very slightly. Okay. It's like 92 degrees here and it just started downpouring. Okay. Um, so, I don't think it really matters how we sequence this, right? It's gonna... Well, technically you should always sequence... You're sequencing in the correct order, but you should always try to do everything the right way. So, we just have to hope he doesn't have a stone forge. Mm -hmm. You could have taken a line where you played Brainstorm, but it was just, like, very risky. Yeah. You can also F6 to get through that. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's the similar thing, just less clicks. Mm -hmm. Plow one? I'm alright with that.
That's a good sign. Yeah. Get wrecked, Theo. <laughs> and do you always attack first? I would. Before you, even if we draw like a discard spell or something. There's no reason not to, but also you can't actually cast Tutor unless he locks. Yeah, yeah. I just mean, like, if we draw, like, a discard spell or... I mean, there's no reason to give them the information of what's in your hand. Yep. Got it. And do we maybe Tutor for Burning Wish here? So, is... Like, think of the overall game plan of Death and Taxes. Mm -hmm. How do they stabilize from this position? Stoneforge. Okay. So what will be to Stoneforge Mystic? Um, I guess Grape Shot. Or, sorry, we're... So if our I don't opponent, think there's anything main deck, right? So if our opponent plays Stoneforge Mystic this upcoming turn, and you yeah. have a Burning Wish in your hand, and then... That gives them an opportunity to play Batter Skull before you can even cast the card that you got off Burning Wish. Yeah. So if that's the case, what would you like to get with Infernal Tutor? Hmm. I'm not sure. The correct answer would be Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize? Okay. Because even if you're not hitting Batter Skull, you're going to take flicker wisp or something else right yeah okay that makes sense uh, an important thing to consider is like how the opponent tries to attack you rather than just like what's the most powerful answer and boom yeah. stoneforge there we go all right Okay, so they have a flicker, which means they're yep. going to get rid of one token and then block two. So they'll be taking four going to one next turn. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to play two creatures on the following turn to stabilize then. All right, no, the flicker wisp dies. So Correct. I don't think they can win. Uh, they could if they, like, they drew swords. This or no, I guess they played a not white source. Like, yeah. if they ha they could have, like, a weird possible, like, sword stay alive situation, but it puts them, like, kind of far behind. Yeah, yeah. Also, I know it's not relevant to this tutoring session, but Pulverize was insane for me at the Grand Prix in the last week or so. I would try a list with it. Yeah, yeah, I have uh, I have one in paper. I just haven't pulled it out yet. It seems like it's a pretty sweet card, though. Yeah. Who doesn't like giant pink elephants, right? I know, right? It's an awesome art. Uh, rumor has it that it's currently for sale, the original art. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I know you have some art pieces, magic art pieces, right? Uh, you not have Chrome Mox? No, I don't have any originals. I just buy prints. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Trying to think of a way that he stays alive right now. Like maybe if he draws a jet. Yeah, a jet would stay alive because he stays yeah. at one over and over. And we win. Uh, so we put in the troops and decays to get the duress. Uh, and you like putting in two more empties, right? On the draw, I like empties. 
Okay. And you take out Burning Wish Tutor, right? Or do you take out the Ponders for their Ponder. in Death and Taxes? Yep. Okay. I take right. a Burning Wish Tutor when you're doing it against another Tempo deck. Yeah, yeah. But in this sort of matchup, I don't think Ponder is actually that great. Hmm. This has, like, a lot of mana sources. That it does. Good. But it doesn't really do anything. We just kind of have to hope to draw into something. This is a, kind of a risky keep if we do keep it. Yeah. So if you saw my last tutoring session, I talked about how I like these sort of hands against uh, Black Red Reanimator. Right. I don't think that they're capable against death and taxes. All right. That makes sense. The reason being is that you have one draw before you get locked out of the game. Yeah. And it's just, like, not a high enough probability. Granted, you did just board into two more empties, but mm -hmm. I still would still just... Still mulligan? Yeah, I would rather have a better chance on a six. This, this is very good. Yeah. Bottom that, right? So, That's... let's think about it for a sec. I guess we can turn one Infernal Tutor for a second Dark Ritual. Correct. But they're on the play, so if they have Thalia... Oh, I guess, yeah, we still can't pay for it. Yeah, so for those reasons, we will bottom, yeah. but... I think it's just important to discuss why, rather than just, like, immediately assume that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Vile. Come on, Red of Flame. Okay. So... Hmm. We can't empty, because we don't have the red for Burning Wish. Um... If we had the red, I think I'd Burning Wish for Massacre. Just to... Hmm. I'm thinking just Island, Lion's Eye Diamond, Chromox, uh, Imprint the Burning Wish, and then pass. So why would you do that? So I want to play out the Diamond just so that if he does play Athalia... Uh, we don't have to pay the one for it. And same with the Chrome Mox. So we have a red source in play. So if he plays Athalia, how are you answering Athalia? I guess we're not. So maybe we do want to keep the Burning Wish. That's what my Just, personal thought is. I agree yeah. that Island is the correct land to play. Yep. Uh, because this way you're not getting wastelanded and you're protecting your black source for ad nauseum. And mm -hmm. I think playing out Lion's Eye Diamond is fine, because you could end up in a scenario where you cast Lion's Eye Diamond and just hope to... I'm sorry, cast Ad Nauseam and just hope to answer the Thalia post uh, Ad Nauseam, but right. it's a little bit of wishful thinking. I think playing Lion's Eye Diamond is almost a free roll, though, because like they might play Revoker and name LED, and then mm -hmm. that way you can Ad Nauseam next turn. Okay. So we're going to play with the Lion's Eye Diamond... And just pass. Sure. Okay. I am a savant. Called it. Poor Theo. Hmm. Yeah. So what are you imprinting? I think, uh, probably Brainstorm, because we want the Burning Wish for after Ad Nauseum. I agree. It's also a way for you to kill Revoker with Massacre so in case you end up needing to use your Lines of Diamonds. Yeah. And so we're just going to cast Ad Nauseum, not breaking LED because mm -hmm. we're at 20 life, right? You also oh yeah, we can't. <laughs> that makes sense. But Might be if you were at 20 life and could break it, I would. Oh yeah, and we still have two more empties in the deck after that. How 
my personal belief is go until it's dangerous. Yep. Yeah, I do the same. You never know if like your opponent has surgical or some other weird card that could trip you up. Yeah. Um, we have played a land, so we'll stop there. And pretty simple from here. I know what you're doing is irrelevant, but... Uh, oh, the Rite of Flame first? Yeah. Well, not well. technically, yes, but you should have cast the Dark Ritual off of your Black Mox instead of just mm -hmm. throwing away a petal. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Um, so, does it... I guess... Uh, we can just Lotus Petal for green, Abrupt Decay, cast Burning Wish, hold priority, crack Lines at Diamond. Do you even need to do that, though? Like, you could just cast Burning Wish, check yeah. some? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, sounds good. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. I've been slowly foiling out TES and paper. Cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh pretty expensive now. I think I picked up my first two foil brainstorms for like one fifty or something. But uh They've like doubled in price since then. The so Mooch. I still have to get the fourth. Oh. So he's either on Bug Delver or Death and Taxes. Alright. Um, so we can empty for th through six. Which probably isn't great. But we still have the Ponder and Burning Wishes. I feel like this hand's just pretty solid. I like it. I would keep this. Yeah. He's been known to play a little bit of Ant, but I think this hand okay. is so good against the first two. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I might... Think about getting an Underground Sea off the Ponder. And then... Or sorry, Underground Sea off the Delta, then Pondering. I'm fine with that. And just see if we hit like another Lotus Petal or something so we can empty for more. And if not, we'll just probably pass. That would be my line of play. I think that's fine. I think I think it's Underground Sea we want to get. Okay. So, so I kind of want to just take the rituals, stack the rituals to be on top, and then empty for a bunch next turn. So there's like two thought processes behind this. Like if he's on bug, th this is like kind of a risky keep. If he's on death and taxes, it's phenomenal because mm -hmm. you would actually stack it so it's ritual tutor ritual. So that way next turn you could ritual. Infernal Tutor, get the other Ritual, Ritual, Petal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Empty. That's better. But if he's on Bug, 
and then Days is your first virtual, then the Wasteland Zoo, you're like pretty much done out of this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's like up to you. Like, I, th- I think it's a fine keep regardless because he might not have all of that. But yeah. So I think yeah, the odds of him being on bug as well as having Days Wasteland. I I, I like taking the odds of just jamming empty, okay. hoping as he's on death in Texas. Um, and we'll just keep Lotus Petal in hand for Storm. Planes. Ugh. So how do you navigate this? So if we wanted to play around Force of Will, we could go Ritual, Ritual, Lotus Petal, Empty. So he's kind of unlikely to Force of Will the first Ritual. Or if we want to make more Goblins, we could do the Infernal Tutor line, where we go Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor for Dark Ritual, and cast both Dark Rituals, Lotus Petal, Empty. So I have another question for you. Mm-hmm. Why are we casting Lotus Petal last? Um, I guess we could play it first, because he's probably not likely to counter it if it's the first spell we play. Okay. Uh, That's probably tighter. Well, there's that, but also, like, what other cards could poss- possibly be in his deck? Um, I guess he could daze or spell pierce. Oh, no, he can't spell pierce. Um, you said the answer. Daze, yeah. So if you just play Dark Ritual here, they're likely to He's going to daze it. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll pedal first. And then is it... I think we want to play around him forcing the Infernal Tutor, even if we get less goblins? Let's, uh, one step at a time. Let's see if our (laughs) stuff resolves first. Alright, that makes sense. Alright. But do you exile? True name. name. Yeah. Okay. So he's probably on Grixis if I had to guess. There's Ouch. that wasteland. That was the issue with keeping the ponder. Mm-hmm. So the good thing is that we're just not out of this game. Like you could easily draw a fetch lane and still be in this. Yep. Okay. Is he playing like the Owen Turn Wall deck? If that's the case he has like three copies of the spell pierce. Hmm. I'm thinking play the Chrome Mox, imprint the Burning Wish. Tutor or ritual, ritual. So empty. Why? I guess we can play to ad nauseum because he, if he's playing like the just guy stone blade kind of deck, we might get blown out by Stoneforge. Sure, but uh, I guess like my bigger issue with this line is like I don't see a reason to do anything this turn. Okay. Uh, like, they're not pressuring you. You're in a position where if you cast anything, they're holding open spell pierce mana. They could easily just also have, like, days to disrupt you. Like, 
you're just like taking a very aggressive line in general where I don't feel like you're actually gaining anything by doing it. Like even if mm -hmm. you empty, you're getting like eight goblins out of this against a deck that likely has Stoneforge. Like yeah. you're just not putting yourself in a winning position. Okay. So I think we're better off passing. Yep. That sounds good. I think, uh, in general, <coughs> sorry, puberty, uh, you need to think a little bit more about, like, the way the games are being played, rather than just, like, I have the ability to do this, should I, or, not, like, should I do it this way or this way, but, like, why do anything? Hmm. There's a stone forge. That was a decent draw. Yeah. So, um, he beats us with Days or Force of Will, if we try to go for it. Mm, I don't know if he does. So... Because we can Chrome Mox, Burning Wish, cast the Rite of Flame, and then if he dazes, we can Dark Ritual in response. Correct, and then you have two Rituals. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of Storm. I don't know if it's enough to beat... Uh, Batter Skull, but yeah. so hypothetically, let's just do the math. So if you play Chromox, you can print Wish. You can go up to seven mana, and then Burning Wish past in Flames it leaves you with one. So there's a line that you could take that wins with that if you're willing to lose the days, which she probably has. You could yeah. uh, play Chromox and Print Wish, Dark Ritual, Reveal Rite of Flame. Yeah. And then that probably wins. Yeah, we're just banking on him having nothing then. Yeah. Like, shields are currently down. Mm hmm. I'd be okay taking that line. Let's try it. Alright. I wonder if he's going to daze this. Hmm. So yeah, we just let that go then, right? Uh, hold on. Uh, why don't I guess we, we can... Yeah, why don't we ritual and then just make a bunch of goblins? Yeah. I mean, he could have another days, but like if he does, you kind of just have to like tip your hat, right? Yeah. So he has, okay. <sighs> Two days is pretty good. Yep. All right, so you're technically not out of this game yet. He has two lands and a batter skull. If you draw like running mana sources, you can probably pass from flame to one. But also, like, you have a lot of time, so there's one. I would yep. just pass. Like, you don't actually care about the Batter Skull too much. Like, if you're able to pass some flames, you're going to be creating a lot of storm. Yeah. We'll be able to kill through that. So he still has another land. I think we got severely punished this game by keeping that ponder. Mm hmm. Looks that way. Alright, so we didn't have a fetch land. Another stone forge is pretty good though. 
Probably jet, yep. Okay. It's not bad. So... We can actually only make 5 mana because we lost a ritual. Yep. I think... You probably just have to play Badlands and pass. Yeah, I can't see any way we win this turn. Ouch. They just had everything. Yeah. So we have two more draw steps. Kind of have to hit like mana source ritual. That was the other card I was thinking of. Yeah. So we can pedal brainstorm. I, th I mean, you've pretty much lost this game already. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any harm in seeing if you can win off this. Like, we know that one of the cards in their hand is Jet. Yep. And concede. Interesting enough, I think if that Burning Wish off the Brainstorm was Red Source, you could probably win that game. Mm hmm um, so empty doesn't seem fantastic, but I guess they, it doesn't look like they're playing Terminus, um, Probably not. but they could have Canonists, so we might want Decays and Truths. Is that you would sideboard? I think I'd take out... Hmm. Might take out Chrome Mox. Two Chrome Moxes for two truths. And then, like, an empty and a burning wish for the two decays. So, I think you're approaching the matchup poor, uh, in, the, like, a poor way. Because, like, it's mm -hmm. not really about killing their threats. Uh, so, I think empty's actually, like, kind of fine in these matchups. I sometimes switch it for tendrils, but not even all the time. It's, like, 50%. It's just, like, a gut feeling. Mm -hmm. I do think, like, hedging a couple of Abrupt Decay is fine. Because if they have a Canonist, you want to be able to kill it. Yep. Uh, but, like, I don't see any reason to board Aquiline Truth in a matchup like this. And this is a matchup where Xanad Swarm shines. Okay. Like, if you're not playing Xanad Swarm for the blue-white matchups, like, why are you playing it, you know? That makes sense. So, you currently have five cards that you need to take out. I think... Yep. You were right on two copies of Chromox. Like, this is a slower matchup. You don't really need them. The only time you ever want to see them is the Alpha of Ad Nauseam. That's fine. Uh, you just brought in three protection spells, which means you can probably shave a discard spell. Okay. And that's probably Duress, right? Correct. Because if they have Stoneforge and Canonus, most likely you want to be able to hit them. Mm -hmm. So now you have two slots. Uh, <clears throat> I am aware we're a little bit low on time, so... I would shave a Burning Wish, just because, like, Empty isn't super good in this matchup. Yeah. And then probably a Ponder. Alright. That makes sense. Ugh. Not a fan of this hand. I think this hand's fine. Okay. Like, so if you think about how it plays out... You search up Basic Swamp, you Thought Seize them twice, hopefully you draw a Ritual and or an LED, and then like you're pretty close to Ad Nauseam. Yeah. Because we have four mana here, we just need three more, basically. Like a Lion's line, Eye Diamond yeah. wins us. So, I guess that makes sense. So, Red Blast doesn't do anything. Wear Tear probably doesn't do anything. It's basically just between the Spell Pierce and the Mystic. 
And I don't think we really care about the Mystic because we're just going to try to ad nauseum. So I think it's just Spell Pierce, right? Correct. So it's also Spell Pierce because you can always Thought Seize the next turn and take the Stone Forge. Mm -hmm. And we don't care about playing with the Puddles. Because he has the Wear and Tear. I mean, even if he didn't have Wear and Tear, I wouldn't be trying to play Lotus Petal. Like, you have to ask yourself, yeah. like, what does this gain you? Yeah. And I don't think the answer is any. Like, it's just nothing. Thoughts he's Stoneforge. So. Like, that's a fine play. But you could have waited a turn to see, like, if they drew if we, force or. I guess that's else. true. The counter argument to that is, like, if you draw Dark Ritual now, you can just go for it. Mm hmm. I think he still has a Tundra in hand. Yeah. No real benefit on fetching on upkeep, just in case we draw a Brainstorm later. Yep. So, I think we can empty. Yeah, we can. I'm For a fan. 12, yeah. You just have to fade a Stoneforge Mystic for one turn. Mm -hmm. The old Black Belcher draw. Uh-oh. No reveal and draw. This could be a stone forge. Nope. Oh, he didn't draw. My bad. But I think it's interesting that he got a Vulcan instead of a planes. I'm yeah. like trying to think of like what red red card is good there. So I'll probably just keep it the same. Uh one second. I wanna look up Owen's list from the GP. Yeah, that looks like what we're playing. Because I'm not sure if he even plays any hate bears. It doesn't look like there's any. So we can probably just cheat the decays back in the sideboard? Yeah, that's what I'd probably do. Plus one mox, plus one ponder. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. Sand doesn't really have like any protection or like a ponder brainstorm. But I guess we have the empty and the ad nauseum in hand. Which is kind of beneficial. I'd I'd probably be tempted to keep this one. I would definitely keep this hand. Yep. You don't need like if you're all only looking to keep hands with discard and cantrips, like you're just mm -hmm. you're not going to win very often with that. Like this is a fine hand. You have to like sometimes let games play themselves out. Yeah. So we saw a lot of red blast from him. So if he fetches, I think we should consider like searching up island and casting brainstorm. Yeah, I'm on for that. And you'd get that over. I guess we saw the wasteland, so basic island's probably the best bet. That's 
it's pretty decent. So I guess the question is if we want to empty or ad nauseum. And I'd probably lean towards ad nauseum. So I don't think that has anything to do with the situation we're currently in. No. So, uh, from my perspective, we want to play around, uh, like, Wasteland as much as possible within reason. Mm -hmm. So, I think we put back Tutor on top and then Underground Sea on top of that, because we have to redraw one of these cards anyway. Yep. And I don't really want multiple Infernal Tutors clogging up our hand. And now we have a well-rounded hand that plays around Wasteland. Because next turn you can fetch your Swamp and Infernal Tutor. And then you still have Underground Sea and then Lotus Petal is your red source. Uh-oh. Huh. He is not on Owen's list. Yeah, we got punished. Wrecked. So we kind of want a Burning Wish for the Massacre. Um, Just play out the Delta and maybe try to Ponder? I don't think so. I think you should still Infernal Tutor for Dark Ritual. Okay. And we want to do that off the Swamp we get off Delta? Correct. Yeah. Ponder? That's what I would do. Yeah. None of those really help us. We're kind of just going for a burning wish, right? Yep. Don't play the C into Wasteland, maybe? So, think about like how we win this game. What does it involve doing? Burning wishing for Massacre. Or Grace So I guess... Yeah, and killing so, his canonist and then playing ad nauseum. Okay, so if we're going to do that, what do we need? Burning Wish. Other than Burning Wish. Oh, um, red mana? Correct. I guess we have the Lotus Petal. So, we're going to need Burning Wish and red sources. Ideally, mm -hmm. we wouldn't waste all of our Lotus Petals on red. So if yep. we play the C now, it's probably going to get wasted, which is an mm -hmm. acceptable loss in my opinion. Uh, alternatively, we could play C next turn and then the pedals and just jam ad nauseum after they've played a spell and hopefully don't wasteland us, but I don't know if that actually is a winning line because yeah. we need them to, one, play a spell and two, not wasteland us. So, I yeah, think... And then ha Sorry, go ahead. And I think if we play a land now and then draw a land, that line is a lot better because now we only need them to do one of the two things. Yeah, and if they have Wasteland while Tundra's out and we get Massacre, they can Wasteland themselves to not get Massacred. I mean, I don't know if that's if they're winning the game on that at that point, but... So I think yeah. we do play C. Yeah. And then you said play out the pedals? I would not. No? Okay. We're also getting to the point where if we draw another artifact, we could probably just empty for blockers. Mm-hmm. Days. Just keep passing. I guess we can play it a pedal so we don't have to discard a hand size. Mm. 
I think we should Infernal an Tutor. Just let him daze it. Okay. And if it resolves, you get a pedal. Yep. Like, that Infernal Tutor was never doing anything for us this game, so, like, we just traded a card that was dead for a daze, or a Lotus yeah. Petal, which would have been a live card for us. That's right. really do much because we're still dead to the Delver. I'd probably just concede we're not winning this game yeah. now. No. I mean, it punished for taking out the Yeah, we were punished for taking out the Decays. Yeah. We never saw a spell pierce. Oh no, we did see a spell pierce out of him. Yeah, we took with the Thoughtseize. I don't think I know what this person plays. Yeah, I do not. But this hand is great anyway. Yep, I'm definitely keeping it. So I'd probably just lead on Bayou Duress. I'd agree with that. Yeah. The old Pox deck. Yeah, really. Um, Inquisition, I guess, because Crime, we can just discard the Brainstorm too. I think that's the only card that matters. Seems fine to me. And uh, let's see. I guess we can play with the Lotus Petal, just to. I guess he's probably not gonna take it if he has another discard spell. But yeah, I generally don't like just playing out artifact mana for the sake of doing it. Like in yeah. discard matchups, that is how you win a lot of the time. But like, it doesn't gain us anything here. And I think so far that's something that like I've seen a lot out of you is like you just want to do things for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think you should think a little bit more about why. I agree. So now we just ad nauseum. Yep. You could probably still kill him with empty before he gets rid of his hand. I mean, not that you were going to empty, yeah. I'm just saying, like, the way this game would play out. Mm hmm. The classic Bayou Volcanic Island deck. Oh, yeah. We have two wishes to imprint. Woo woo. I can't believe he managed to beat Pox. It was tough. So I'm trying to think what they would have. I guess they would have uh, permanent base state. So we want the truths and decays. So 
this is a general thing that I think a lot of uh, legacy players don't understand. And I'm not faulting you for this, but mm -hmm. when you play a lot of modern, they talk about how in Jund Mirrors, this card is bad. Right. This is a, a Jund Mirror. Like, okay. your discard is not good against their discard. Instead of drawing discard spells, you really just want to have your deck be f more full of real action spells. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you want to board down on discard. Uh, okay. I don't think that they have creatures in their deck, or if they do, they're not worth discarding. So, like, I would take out Thoughtseize, personally. And I do like boarding sense. in the Truths and Decays. What you could also do is board out the Duresses for Tendrils, Past and Flames, and Empties. Uh, that's up to you. It makes your deck super full of stuff. It makes Ad Nauseam a little bit worse. Yeah. You are playing a 8 Chromox deck. Um, it just gives you a lot of live draws instead of cards that are medium. It's up to you. Yeah, so you take all, out all 4 Duress for Past and Flames, 2 Empties, and uh, Tendrils? I mean, it's something you can one. do. I would probably right. do it, but it's up to you. Yeah, I'm all for trying new stuff. Yeah, we probably die if we cast out Nauseam I mean, at a low life. At like a, low at like a life. 12 life one. I would agree well, on a low is... life, but uh, I mean, that hands hmm. Yeah, it has a lot of good draws. It does nothing. Chains of Mephilosophilies. Oh. Dark Ritual down. I'd assume so. I was correct, Chains. Yeah, that does nothing against Ad Nauseam. I mean, you have to get to Ad Nauseam. <laughs> oh boy. So, are we doing anything else this turn? I wouldn't expect. So, no. you win these matchups by sitting on Mind's Eye Diamonds a lot of the time. Okay. So, I would personally play out the LEDs. Okay. Unlike the Lotus Petals, like, the Mind's Eye Diamond is a very valuable resource that I don't think you can afford to have discarded. Like, if your opponent plays Cabal Therapy next turn, you probably lose the game. This is like an old school deck. Pox is a very bad old deck. <laughs> Alright, we just need... Mm, I guess Burning Wish doesn't get much. I guess we get the empty. You also have enough um, mana where you can Dark Petition for the main deck empty. Even through Leyline. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, we're doing nothing this turn. Hold on. It's kind of a dead draw, right? Wreath chains. So I guess it's... So in mm. order to draw the card off Ponder, you must first discard a card. Yeah. I think we're, we're full of cards we don't give a shit about. That's true. And we're kind of forced. I guess we're not. We can get the basic island, but no, then we get punished. Shamire. Oh yeah, I guess not. Eh? Let's get the volcanic. Yep. Uh, shuffle. Yeah, none of these do anything. Hmm. So, I'm thinking it's probably tendrils we want to discard. To be honest, I'm not sure if it matters. Yeah. Like, any of those three will do. I think the empty is the weakest card because you have three more of them in your deck rather than the tendrils, but it's mm -hmm. you. I'll probably discard the empty. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah, that's fine.
right. Dark petition. So we'll have. So burning wish for dark petition is generally generally a nine mana line, mm -hmm. uh, assuming that you have uh, spell mastery. Yep. So you don't have spell mastery, so you just have three. So it's fourteen mana. Yeah, and we only we have twelve, right? So. But we're not getting ad nauseum. We're getting empty. So mm -hmm. uh, you play out the mox and print tendrils. And then Yeah, we definitely have enough for this. I don't know why we, I didn't think we did. But you one hundred percent have enough mana to petition for empty, because that's just the three lines of diamonds. Mm -hmm. Like that's nine mana, and then you still have a leftover mana, so I wouldn't crack the fetch. Okay. So we're getting petition. You didn't crack oh, all these. Yeah. I screwed that up. Um, so we probably just get petition then. Uh, oh, this gets exiled. That was really shitty. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think... That sucked. Yeah, get petition. I don't think it matters what you go with it. Yeah, that's awkward. Because now Burning Wish is exiled, so we don't even have any cards for Spell Mastery. Well, you have Leyline in play. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you draw a land, a ritual, or a right of flame next turn. Ad nauseum. Yeah. Then we could probably crack two of them. To the lion's eye diamonds. Yeah. That'll All right. Do. Did you crack the last hold, one? Hold for... on, hold on. Oh, undo. Whoops. Undo. Yeah, I accidentally got the black again. Would you crack the third one for green? Or blue, rather? Why would you crack it for blue? <laughs> I guess the chains probably stops that. I would leave it as is. Okay. You need Infernal Tutor sometimes, so like you want to leave yourself with the ability of becoming Hellbent. Mm -hmm. So... We could just... It's ten goblins. Ten goblins through two blockers is going to be kind of tough. Yeah. I would keep going. Twelve goblins hmm. is closer. Yeah. But, well, right. he only has... Well, if he plays... Doesn't he only have one blocker? I guess, yeah. Uh, the downside is he also has Curse Girl active. With, I guess he has four cards in hand, so like it's not super problem. <laughs> uh, this is your decision. I don't want yeah. to be wrong. Uh, so, like, <laughs> this is 12 goblins. I feel like 12 goblins is likely to win, but you can't even swing out because you have to leave at least one back. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I think it's really close. I think if you stop, it's a safer line rather than flipping again. Because if you reveal a two, you could just be dead a curse scroll. That's true. Yeah, I might just stop here then. I believe you even get a land drop. How lucky. Yeah, So we leave two back. Hold on. So if you swing with one more, hypothetically, you're only dead if you left him removal spells. 
because mm-hmm. he would swing with two, you would block one. And I could swing with eleven again. So you'd... So is that lethal though? Because he's gonna animate and block two. He'll take nine. And then next turn he would take nine again. So it's it doesn't actually change the clock. No. So I think ten is fine. Yeah. Hmm. He's going to try to curse roll. What does he name? Does it say? Name's Leyline of the Void. Okay. Great, great deck. But he revealed Inquisition. So I think that was a little bit of a misplay for you to just play your land, because you could have pondered into something that was actually relevant, like a burning wish, and then grape shot them for the win. Yeah. Can we not do that after we attack? Well, you can't draw a card because of the chains. Uh, how does that work? Oh, you just mill the top. Correct. Ah. Uh, okay. So we just want to leave two back again. Yeah. So that makes sense. Chains is a weird card. Got it. So now he can win if he curse scrolls us. So now he should Inquisition because it's free. Mm-hmm. Because it also increases the probability that he wins. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. You got the... Come on, sinkhole. We have a 33% chance to win right now. Oh. That's oh, right. Uh, hold on. Get the next hold on. Oh, I wanted you to look at the top three. Because that mm. could have been... The burning wish. Uh, yeah. All right. I would leave it the same. Okay. Sands kind of geese. It's fine. Yeah. It makes goblins. Nice. And our opponent mulligan to five. Yeah. Seems good. So. Yeah, we can't do anything spectacular this turn. Yeah, I'd probably wait. Like, you could Burning Wish or Empty, but if you do that and they have Thought Seize, this game's going to go kind of poorly. Mm-hmm. Man, this guy <laughs> loves chains. Yeah, really. Ooh, different order this time. So, if he takes Burning Wish here, next turn you could imprint Rite of Flame and whatever you draw. And then just search up Ad Nauseam. Or you could draw a land. Yeah, so we just pass. Yep. Ouch. You still have a ton of empties in your deck. And six more tiers. All right. Uh, 
don't actually have the mana. So he's played two Inquisitions so far. I think you should probably just wait. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Okay. So now you could search up Swamp and then get Ad Nauseam and then if you draw any mana source you win the game. Right. Um okay. Nope. Wrong fetch land, my friend. So Oh yeah, because we want the island and the swamp. Okay, so... We'll still probably get swamp, right? Yep. And then just like a volcanic island off this. You don't need to cast that, or use that. Okay. Um, so we're going to chrome mox. Imprint the burning wish. Cast right of nope, flame. Nope. So if you cast Rite of Flame, what happens? Um, because then we're we can't get a blue source with the Bloodstain Mire. No, nope, we're not worried about that either. So what we're doing is getting ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. So we can't cast ad nauseum this turn. So how does? I guess we want the Rite of Flame under the Chrome Mox. Yes. Right? So. You just have to think, like, a couple turns in advance. Mm hmm So, nope, you don't want to use your land. Yep. Just Infernal Tutor for... So now we win off of any mana source. Yep. And they just do nothing. Yeah, now, now we get punished for using the wrong fetch land. Because we have to... I guess we just don't fetch. I would fetch. But yeah, you are getting a little bit punished for the fetch land. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. I probably actually should have got Underground Sea. Yeah, that was definitely the wrong land. But these are all yeah. fine. So, how do you sack this? Like this? Yep. You want the Dark Ritual on top and just cast it now? I agree. Oh. Oh, fuck. Chains. I forgot about the chains. Yeah, so did I. Ah, oh, that sucks. Hmm. We're kind of getting wrecked. This probably should have been a win. Uh, that was really shitty. Um, just play it out. Play the, with the lines I am. So, how we win this game at this point is empty the warrens. So we just want to keep it in hand for storm then. Yeah. Okay. Punish for the fetch land. Mm hmm. Um, I don't think we want to just run the bayou out into a wasteland. Uh, I don't think just it matters. We... So, like, another thing is, like, they haven't played him to yet. We, mm -hmm. we haven't, seen, we haven't one, seen that. But it's likely in their deck. And I guess they've played two wastelands, so it's more likely they have the him.
They really don't want, want us using our graveyard. We're not dead yet. We have a lot of live draws. Mm -hmm. So we have one more draw step. Interesting enough, a fetch land uh, stops us from pondering now. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason, like, the basic island is biting us. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. That game, we just, I just lost a sloppy play. I feel slightly at fault for the ad nauseum thing, but I was taking notes on your play, and mm -hmm. I was like split between watching the game and taking notes, and kind of cost us. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Yeah, we'll go over the notes at the end, but I have some stuff written down so far. Cool. Yeah, I haven't played against the uh, chains much. This hand's alright. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm tempted to keep the pedal and the C on top so that we can eventually add nauseum. Hmm. So it would be turn three that we'd be casting ad nauseum then. I'm not sure. What do you think of this ponder? I will keep it. Yeah. I'll so put, you put pretty the, much on the bottom. Yeah. And then. Doesn't matter. Pedal. Yeah. And Swept Teeth is generally a pretty good sign. Mm hmm. Maverick or four color? Probably Maverick. So, yeah, we just have to play probably Volcanic Island, just because if they wasteland our sea, we're cut off black. And then I guess we could start off with Ponder. See if we can just win this turn. So why is that the line? Because if we hit Dark Ritual, uh, no Dark, yeah, Dark Ritual lets us cast Ad Nauseum. It does, but like, why is that the line? Like, do you think that's a high percentage play line? Um, probably not super high. All right. So what's more likely, you finding Dark Ritual or them having a Hate Bear in hand? Them having a Hate Bear. Okay. So if that's the case, when you want a burning wish, I guess that makes sense. And also, like, like let's say you play Volcanic Island, you grab Burning Wish, you get Massacre, and then they play Green Sun Zenith Galactique. What's the top card of your deck? Oh, then we've still got the Burning Wish on top for Grape Shot. Yeah. Okay. So, so this makes it so you can cast that Nauseam next turn if they decide not to play Hate Bear, and if they have a Hate Bear, you have two different outs to win the game. Yeah, that sounds good. So we're burning wishing, burning wish for grape shot then. Nope. Massacre. Or are we getting t uh, massacre? I guess grape shot's probably safer. 
I don't think it is. So if it, if, like, they can play Thalia. Thalia Wasteland. Yeah. Or just like Thalia here makes it so you can only group shot for one. Like Thalia is more likely than Gaddictique. Okay. I've already played one Green Sun. And so if, then we'll play up the Lotus Petal. You don't need to. Okay. We'll just pass here then. Yep. Like, okay, so let's go back to something we've talked about. Like, what do you gain by playing Lotus Petal here? Yeah, nothing. So if they play Thalia, you still have to play your Underground Sea, Tap Island, Massacre. Like, mm -hmm. the playing the Petal here doesn't change the state in which our game is. It only takes away a possible future storm. Well, they just don't have it. Like, you're, the lines that you're suggesting aren't terrible, and I don't want to make it seem like I think that they are. I just want you to think a little bit more about, like, how games play out. Right. Rather than just, just like... Just kind of thinking, thinking in advance. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Like, so sense. one of my initial things is I think you think something very quickly and think that's probably the right play without like taking a second chance. Considering to... other options. Yes. Yeah. I'm also not shocked that the person named Angelic Execution is playing a Thalia deck. <laughs> For what it's worth, in these sort of situations where my opponent's not F6ing or conceding, I would duress. play a Duress or Thoughtseize and make them concede rather than give us the info. Yeah. Rather than t let them know where our cards are. Yeah. And Duress is better. I mean, you're at three. I would have played Duress over Thoughtseize, but... They're not going to kill you from here, but it's technically <laughs> safer to play Duress than Thoughtseize. Yeah, and they concede. So Maverick is a little bit different from uh, Death and Taxes. I like mm -hmm. keeping in my ponders against Maverick. Okay. And so we're probably taking just the Fort Arrest then? Correct. Are we boarding in extra empties? I guess I should ask that. Well, what would they be coming in over? So in this probably, matchup, like, probably ponder. the Maverick decks have Thoughtseize. So if that's the case, you're better off with copies of Ponder than Empty. Because mm -hmm. like if they're playing the Black Splash, they have Thoughtseize than Zell's Persecution. So they'll have Sweepers, and I don't want to overload on Empties if they have Sweepers. But also, like you get to smooth out your draws with Ponder. Yeah. And sometimes Maverick decks keep hands based off Green Sun, Zenith, and Deteague, and I'd rather have the ability to dig for my outs rather than cards that are shut off. Yeah, this hand's just good. Yeah, it's a very strong hand. Yeah, the, my my thought process of not bringing in the empties was just yeah playing around sweepers. So, we, we can empty hmm. for a crap load. Yeah. So the line would be Chromox, Pitch Ponder, Get yep. Swamp, Ritual, Tutor, Ritual, Ritual, Lotus Petal, Tutor, Empty. I yeah. think I'm okay with that. Like, that seems like a good line to me. Yeah. 
we have to put them on like exactly Stoneforge or Sweeper. So I think that's actually not the correct sequencing though. So I think it's better to go Ritual Tutor so that way if they Surgical in response, you're not down a Ponder. Yeah, okay. Getting probably Basic Swamp then. Yep. And then ritual, ritual. I'm gonna. I've already said the line. I'm gonna take a step back. Yeah. Okay. Make you do it. Oh, I guess we also have enough for ad nauseum. I didn't realize that. So that's probably better then. It does avoid sweepers, but yeah. we've used two of our six initial mana sources, so like it's pretty close. Because we'd empty for 18, and that's... Or, sorry, 16. And I don't remember the math if that beats Stoneforge on turn 2. It does beat Stoneforge on turn 2. Okay. Um, so we'd just be playing around Sweepers then. Yeah. And they searched up Basics Forest instead of, like, a Bayou, so I'm willing to guess they're not on the blacklist. Mm-hmm. That's just my assumption. Uh, I would probably empty in this spot. Okay. I like that. Those are not sweeper colors. Holy light. Yeah, I'm guessing that's not the sweeper that Maverick plays, though. No. And they kill a bunch of their own stuff. Yeah. And the concession. Shockingly, 14 <laughs> goblins was greater than 7 life. Apparently. Alright, let's win your uh, tickets back. Yeah, I like that. I have never faced a taco farmer before. His hand is Dece. I like it. And you got to be on the play? And they're not on reanimator because they don't have a chancellor because they always do. Yeah, apparently I, I've I always see the chancellor every time. Belcher. Oh boy. Huh. So I think it's just empty then. Yeah. Yeah. We need them to not cycle street wraith in a belcher. Our hand was pretty good in the Vulture Mirror as well. Yeah. Come on, line is that almond. Hmm. So we could get another Dark Ritual. Can we empty? I guess empty is not what we want to do against Belcher, so. Hmm. Seeing as they didn't just play out a bunch of like their Lion's Eye Diamond and stuff like that, I kind of feel like duressing this turn. 
but that doesn't really put us in a winning position, so I'd probably rather just Infernal Tutor for another Dark Ritual. So my concern is them having enough mana to voucher us if they draw it off the top. Okay. And because of that, I'd rather play safer, which means casting Duress. Mm -hmm. Because you have a lot of draws that win the game next turn anyway. I just want to make sure we don't die. So just the Lion's Eye Diamond? Yeah. Right? Alternatively, you could take Rite of Flame, so if you draw your own, it's uh, <laughs> plus one. Yeah. I think I'm just on the Lion's Eye Diamond's plan. Yeah. I think that's better because if they do draw Belcher, I think they're one short. I'm not actually positive on that, but I think they're one short. Yeah, I don't know. Well, doesn't look like it. So now that, you're do it. Yeah. And people hate Chromox. I love it. That was easy. Hmm. All right. So how do you think we cyborg for this matchup? Hmm. So we probably don't want empty because it's probably just going to lose to a belcher. I would agree with that. Um, and we can bring in an echoing truth if they just dump a bunch of goblins. Seems strong. Now, I'm not sure if we want the two Echoing Truths. Yeah, I feel like one's good enough just to hedge against it. But maybe we go down to Ponder and bring in both. Ponder, so, out Ponder, out empty. This isn't like a common thing, so I don't blame you for not knowing this, but mm -hmm. what does Burning Wish get most of the time? Empty. Yeah. So I would probably shave a Wish for a second copy of Echoing Truth. Alternatively, okay. if you think that they have Telemann performance, you could board in a Xantid over one of the mm -hmm. point truths. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's... I, I just don't want to draw a Xantid Swarm in my opening hand. But I understand. Like, I would probably just do two at point truth, and if I get Telemann game two, I'm boarding in Xantid game three. Yep. So... Yeah, that looks good. No empties in the main, that's right? Correct. Okay. That's strong. Yeah, I like this. Need to not get belched. But they kept seven on the play, so I'm willing to guess they have something. Or they kept the infinite street wraith hand. Ooh. Our hand just got a lot better. Probably lead on Thoughtsies. I don't think it matters. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
They just have like two of everything we'd take. So maybe just a burning wish. So does burning wish actually change how they play their game? No. So I guess the second ritual might be probably more impactful. It might be. Take... Alternatively, what is an effect that they aren't like duplicates on? The spear guide. Correct. It's also an initial mana source that doesn't cost them a card. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I would personally take all wish uh, spear guide. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah, we're not gonna lotus petal to us. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to. Oh. Getting gobbled. Mm hmm. So now, if we draw one of our two Echoing Truths, we can answer them. The good thing is, if they have one more mana source, we could be Telemund. So they don't have that. Way to get punished for not playing your artifacts. Ooh. Still good. Yeah. Just hope we don't get belched. They might also just kill themselves with street rates this game, so. That is a possibility. He could just get tendrils. That's a possibility too. Can you click what they revealed? Uh, the, yeah, the Taiga. Um, or isn't it the other tab? This one, this is the revealed. Okay. So they're going to empty us. Yeah. We're fine with that. Yeah. Cool. There's some nice lightning over there. Yeah. It went from me walking my dog and dripping sweating to <laughs> thunderstorms. <laughs> Love upstate New York. When you watch this later, you will see it's gotten dramatically darker since the time we started this <laughs> session. Right. So we'll probably get um, Badlands and then just echoing truth them. So let's think about what we're going to do first. Mm -hmm. So, what do we not need out of this hand? Uh, the ponder. I would disagree uh, with that. I, I guess the thought seize. The thought seize does nothing. Sure. So I agree. So I would start off by playing Chromox and a thought seize, and then mm -hmm. we want to go and treat this turn. So we need another blue source, and then you advance your game by casting ponder. So we need two blue sources. So I think we should be getting Volcanic Island with this Delta. Okay. And then the thought seize can be your other black source. Right. Alright. Nope. You did not listen. Come on, Ben. What did I do? You were supposed to imprint Chromox. 
and then then you tap one of your blue sources and the mox the echoing truth and then you can cast ponder this turn oh <laughs> i see i i misunderstood that's my bad so we just pass that now yep Doesn't matter. Yeah. I think you can actually naturally swarm them from here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they're at 12, yeah. Let's see, we have three. We have nine. Um. Yeah, we definitely have enough mana. So you can imprint uh, the Thought Season Cast Ponder. Uh, yeah. Just take the right of flame then? Yeah. Um, three black. And Tendrils is in the sideboard. Ooh, ooh, we got you your money back. Three twos is not bad. It's kind of medium, yeah. but it's fine. So uh, yeah. I'd like to start by going over something you do well. Mm -hmm. And that's, you do a lot of the small fundamentals correctly. Like, you play out the order of your cards correct. So, like, you generally play Chromox, Petal, Rite of Flame, Ritual, LED, all in the proper order. Like, that's something that a lot of people don't do that bothers the shit out of me, and you don't do that. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think there are some areas in which you have a lot of improve or a lot of room to grow. And the first thing would be, think about why. Like, why are you doing things? Like, you tend to just do things, uh, and I don't think it benefits you. Like, you just move very quickly. Yeah, I'm super impulsive. Uh, and That's, I think uh, one of my notes is, like, you need to slow down and think about your decisions. So think about why yeah. you're doing things and what it gains you rather than just clicking. That makes um, sense. Then my next note is understand your role in the matchup. Like, against a blue-white control deck, you wanted to bring in four pieces of permanent hate. Like, right. that's a lot. Uh, so, like, they're probably playing one or two canonists. Do you really need four answers to it? Probably I guess not. not. Yeah. Uh, then they're not even guaranteed to have it. Like, unfortunately, Malamujo had a hate bear, but they they could not even play them. Like a lot of those sort of decks don't play them. So, mm -hmm. think about your roles in the matchup, how you want to attack them, how you expect to be attacked, and then think about that a bit. Um, the burning wish misclick. So I think that came from you being a little bit tunnel visioned on your line, and you have to remember about like the, your costs in the game and where you're at uh, because that directly relates to our next note which is like try not to lose track of the game state i.e. chains from Mephistopheles with your land drop because like you could have cast pondered the turn earlier and then discarded the land and then on the following turn you pondered and then were forced to discard your ad nauseum um, so yeah like, that was brutal my note on that is like think out your lines and just slow down because you do play way too fast like I think you're just very impulsive and just slow it down. It would be the best thing for you. Like you didn't really come close to timing out any of these matches. So mm -hmm. a little bit slower, think about what your options are. And so like the first thing you think of isn't always best and holy shit, that was a huge bolt of lightning. Um, <laughs> I heard that one. Consider your fetch lands. Obviously like you were punished by that ponder. Like you were punished three times that match because you fetched for use the wrong fetch land. So, you do need to think about which fetch lands you're using and how they'll impact the rest of the game. Uh, so, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but think turns ahead. Uh, so, the game against Maverick where you wanted to just ponder to see if you could find uh, Dark Ritual. Like, you had a very easy win on turn three. You don't need to find Dark Ritual. Just think about how you can make it so they don't beat you. And that was done by Burning Wish for Massacre. 
you kept the swamp in your hand to protect it. And on, then on the following turn, even if they had their other option that could beat you, you had a backup answer. Like, there's no reason to fact, or to ponder looking for Dark Ritual. Like, I think that was your lowest percentage line that you could have possibly have chosen, but it was the first one that you had thought of. Therefore, you wanted to do it instead of examining what you had available to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then my last thing is think about, for discard, think about how games play out and the effects that your opponents have will end up in the game. So, like, the Elvish Originary, for example, like, that was a pretty easy decision for me. Like, all of their cards in their hand are multiple, so one, that's a big indicator. You take the unique effect, but two, think about how that card impacts their hand against everything else. It was the only card that was actually an initial mana source. So, those are the notes that I have for you. Okay. Um, like I said, you do some of the things right, but I think that these are just room for growth. Like, you're obviously not terrible, but there's just some small things you could do to maximize your win percentages. Yeah, those all make sense. All right. Well, uh, thank you for... Oh, we should probably mention, uh, Ben received this TES tutoring session because he was one of the people that donated towards the site fundraising. So, Ben, thank you for that. Oh, I use the site all the time. Yeah. It's the least I could do. I appreciate it. Well... Thank you for doing this TES tutoring session. Oh, thanks for having me.